Can everyone hear me in the back? Raise your hand. All right, great. Um, so this is the only talk in this session that has synthesis in the title, but is not synthesizing programs. Okay, so we're synthesizing formulas or specifications. We put synthesis in the title just to look cool, uh, but we didn't know we were going to be scheduled in the last session. So you know, next time maybe we won't. So this is joint work with Ishil and Ari. Ishil is not here. the beginning. This is a whore triple. You execute the program, and the program terminates. You end up in idea. of the program, okay? And then you combine all the All good. Function. Maybe it hasn't been implemented yet. order to prove that the program is correct, okay? And of Well, partly because it's fun. Okay? You know some of the functions, and you want to verify it, well, you can procedure independently and make assumptions a specification of each procedure and that's the weakest possible specification an idea of important security where you put a function that says yes or no, good or bad, right? That we can uh, plug in there, right? So lots of some function foo, so foo we just call it, and zero, all right? And now the question is, what is foo, the specification will be a formula over the returns and the parameters. Who always returns one, I'm good to go. Right? Is that foo returns any number that is greater than or equal to negative. Right? So this is what I mean. Now it gets Okay, I want the sum of these two uh, values. Right. So one possible weakest. I have to strengthen this guy.
specify Fy, we can only talk about Fy. to optimal front of maximal specifications. Come up with such specifications. Well, the idea is fairly simple. Okay. Now, A bounded program or a finite number of paths is simpler as usual. A subset of the paths. We ask a verifier um, is the set of paths. Okay. And if it says yes, this so Sampling. So the interesting idea is synthesis. For the rest of the finite set of paths. So a finite set And it turns out when you have a program that doesn't have any loops, most of Assume it's a first order uh, logic formula. Next set of uh, we have to prove this property that pre <coughs> this phi ps thing. that we know nothing about. So what we do is we replace So I'm going to assume that the, this weakest possible formula that makes this implication and I'll tell you why. So abduction says all right and I want to find and for Weakest possible formula A of X. I can okay, I'm asking, give me all the models that if I can abduction problem, we have a multi abduction problem. So what does that mean? That uh, that will represent it. About might be called multiple times with different arguments and different. And connectives in the formula, right? So the first piece of the puzzle transform it into a problem that looks like this. The 
just have a conjunction of unknown predicates. that implies psi, okay, some psi. Okay. So that's step one. So now I have a nice looking problem that almost looks like a classical abduction problem, but it's not. Okay. So now, essentially, the problem boils down to what we call Cartesian decomposition. What we're really doing is we have this formula psi, which is effectively a right? And I want to decompose it into a bunch of sets. Variables xn, and so on and so forth. And when I take psi, right? So that's why we call it Cartesian decomposition problem. So the high level idea is as follows. Or find a solution, the stupidest possible solution. Right, completely empty. That is, of course, a good solution. Right? It's a solution to this problem because false and false and false, so empty and empty and empty implies anything. Right? But what I want, really, is I want to find the maximal possible one. Right? So I can keep growing these sets until I can't weaken them anymore. Right? So this is the high-level idea. So how, what does that mean and how do we weaken these sets? Okay, so first possible solution. Well, the first thing I can do is I can just get models of this formula of psi and break them up into the part of the model that talks about x1, part of the model that talks about x2, and so on and so forth, and seed those formulas, uh, seed those relations with those models. So I begin by fall, at false, then I find one model of psi, and I take the, the, the piece of the model that talks about x1, take the piece of the model that talks about xn, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, I can ask for another model, and grow this set even further, right? So it'll look something like this. And then I can get one more model and just keep throwing in models until I'm done, okay? Super simple, right? Just grabbing models and throwing them in the, these bags until this formula is no longer valid, which means I can't add any more models. But of course, there might be many models. You know, if you're dealing with a Boolean formula, exponentially many uh, models, potentially. Um, if you're dealing with the arbitrary theories, then there might be infinitely many models. So I can't just rely on just getting more and more models. What I need to do is I need to make big strides in this weakening. Right? So how are we gonna make big strides in this weakening? So here's the idea. The idea is that I'm gonna start by seeding an initial solution, perhaps a single model, maybe a set of models in each of these, and that won't be a maximal solution. That will be just a solution. Okay. So this will be R1 sigma, this will be Rn sigma, and so on and so forth. Now, in turn, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna fix all of those, okay, R2 to Rn, and I'm gonna try to weaken R1 further. And it's, in fact, I'm gonna try to weaken it to the, to, the, to the max until I can't weaken it anymore, right? So specifically, what this means is I'm gonna take all of those, the current solution that I have, and I'm gonna call it B, so that is now a fixed formula with no unknown predicates, or no abducibles, and R1 becomes an unknown over the variables x1. So what does this look like? This looks like a classical abduction problem. So I can solve it by just doing quantifier elimination. Right? So now I solve this using quantifier elimination, and what I have is a weakening of R1 sigma that includes R1 sigma uh, that can't be weakened anymore without breaking this implication. And then it turns out if I do this in turn to each of these, fixing everyone else and then solving for that, fixing everyone else and then solving for R3, fixing everyone else, solving for R4, and so on and so forth, if I do just one linear pass through these, I will end up with a maximal solution for this problem. Okay. So this is the idea. So the high level idea is that I can reduce this question of solving multi-abduction uh, to a bunch of calls to classical abduction, right? But what I've been talking about so far is what we call linear multi-abduction. So some of you may have noticed this word linear and wondered what the hell does this mean, right? Uh, so linear means that the same predicate or the same unknown only appears once, okay? I can't have multiple calls uh, to the same function. A function can be only called once, right? And this turns out to be a simple problem. In fact, our, our algorithm terminates um, all the time. It's a complete algorithm for, you know, given assumptions on the decidability of the theory, okay? And what we get out of this algorithm, okay, 
for now, I'm going to talk about the linear case. I haven't uh, talked about the nonlinear case. Uh, what, what you will see is, of course, as, as I said before, there's a Pareto optimal front of solutions. And you see so two sources of non-determinism. What is the initial seed, or what is the initial solution that I have? And what is the order of the generalization that I do, right? I could start by generalizing R1, or I could start by generalizing R3. Okay? And the order in which I choose the generalization and the order in, uh, or, and the initial seed I choose, I will get different answers at the end. Okay. So now let's switch attention to the nonlinear case. So nonlinear um, multi-abduction is, uh, is pretty interesting. And what it, what we, the way we solve it is we also do Cartesian decomposition. But then when we have two guys that are the same predicate but over different arguments, we come up with something called isomorphic decomposition, right? Because essentially what we need to do is we, find, we need to find the same formula to fill in this predicate with, but it will be over the variables x. And another formula that is equivalent to that modulo variable renaming. So they're isomorphic, okay, modulo variable renaming. Right? So for instance, if I, if I say rx and ry implies x plus y is greater than or equal to zero, the only possible solution for this uh, or the maximal solution for this nonlinear multi-abduction problem is that x is greater than or equal to zero and y is greater than or equal to zero. You can easily see that these are the same formula modulo variable renaming. Right. Yeah. So that's a you know, simple idea. If I have the same function appearing multiple times, I want to synthesize the same specification for each occurrence of the function. Right. Okay. So isomorphic decomposition uh, I'm not going to go into detail. The algorithm is pretty involved, but it's actually way more complex than the, uh, the traditional uh, or the linear multi-abduction. Okay. So the challenges are this. If, to get the initial model, is not, it's not an easy just get a random model of, uh, of the post condition or of psi, the right-hand side of the multi-abduction problem. Okay. I have to get a model that if I decompose and then take the Cartesian product of and, and so on and so forth, will imply that thing because I have to duplicate it for every occurrence. Okay. And this essentially amounts to solving a there exists for all formula. Okay, so essentially I, I throw in a for all at the beginning because I need some extra guarantees. Okay. And then the other challenge is how do we grow these relations isomorphically? Okay. Meaning the relations, the predicates that uh, are, belong to the same function or represent the same function, I need to grow them and maintain that they're the same uh, shape. So the details are in the paper. I'm just going to give you a hint on how to do this thing. Okay. So essentially, whenever I have Rx and Ry like this, um, and if you recall from the previous algorithm, what we do is we just grow them. Right. So we're just going to assume that they're totally different. This is R1 and this is R2. So I'm going to assume that the problem is linear. And I'm going to start growing them, starting from false, just as I did before. Okay. And as soon as they diverge, okay, so this guy overshoots and this guy stays like this, then we have to conjoin the results. Okay. So one guy says, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and weaken some more, but then the other guy says, oh, you have to be like me. So he pulls it back, right? So obviously now the process is not monotonic, and as a result, it's, it's more complex, right? So it turns out in the propositional case, well, of course, uh, you'll end up terminating because there's finitely many models. There are theories for which uh, there isn't actually a maximal solution representable in that theory. So there's an infinite ascending of chain of weaker and weaker solutions. Okay, so in linear rational arithmetic, for instance, we can keep weakening and weakening and weakening forever because there isn't a closed form. And if you're interested, ask me in the question and answer period, I'll show you a cool example. So evaluation. I'm not gonna talk a lot about evaluation because this is Poffel and no one cares about graphs here. So essentially this is implemented in, uh, in UFO. Okay. UFO is a verifier, so I just threw on um, a, a synthesis loop on top of it. Okay. And quantifier elimination is done with Z3. Okay. So we really stress Z3's quantifier elimination engine, and I had to do lots of hacks and heuristics to actually make it work. And most importantly, it is very sensitive to variable ordering. Because the formulas can be very large with thousands of variables, and uh, the way you eliminate variables can be uh, very, very rough. So look at, the, look at the paper for details. And what we did is we applied it to some parametrized examples just to stress test it and, and evaluate it on. We also applied it to the simplified Windows device drivers from uh, SVConf. So these device drivers you know, have properties that you want to verify, and they have calls to OS kernel routines. Okay? So these are not in, inside the driver. They're calling the OS, and some you know, brave people at Microsoft 
um, actually wrote stubs for all of these routines okay, and added them to these drivers. So we, what we did is we removed these stubs and we said, okay, can, what is the weakest possible specification of this function uh, that we get uh, uh, in order to make the program correct or to, to prove it correct? And we come, came up with things that look pretty much like the stubs. Okay? And all of this was done in a, you know, a small amount of time, zero to three minutes. But of course, it's a very hard problem. It's not solved yet. Okay. So to summarize, really the key ideas here are a Seeger-like or a Seegis-like algorithm for uh, synthesizing the maximal possible specification. This turns out to reduce to a new problem that we define and we call multi-abduction. Multi-abduction is super cool. It has two forms, linear and nonlinear. Linear easy, nonlinear hard, okay? And the two ideas that we use to solve these are Cartesian decomposition and symmetric or isomorphic decomposition. And the implementation UFO gives us promising results. And uh, uh, at this point, I'll take questions. Thank you. Um, hi. Uh, I, I, some of the problems that you encountered uh, with uh, the nonlinear case, I mean, uh -huh. when, you, when you had to do uh, isomorphic uh, decomposition, uh, looks similar to problems when solving uh, nonlinear on closes right. and interpolation. So ca can, you, can you actually comment on the link between what you do and interpolation? Uh, yeah, so, so you could think of what we're solving is a recursive system of nonlinear horn clauses where, some of the, uh, where the, the, some of the predicates, the unknown predicates that you're solving for are unconstrained, meaning they never appear on the right-hand side. Um, so it's effectively that. So why isn't this a synthesis problem where you're asked to find a Pareto uh, optimal solution? Why is, this a why is this not a synthesis problem where you're asked to find a Pareto normal solution where you have a CGIS algorithm where you get a counterexample. Whenever you give me a solution, I will check whether for Pareto uh, optimality. Uh, if, if it's not, I'll give you a counterexample to that. Why is it not that? Um, so I, so, so we, I mean, the paper has synthesis of the title. <laughs> no, no, what I mean is why doesn't it re reduce to a non-maximal synthesis problem where maximality is part of the specification? Well, I mean, in some sense, the, 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 the growing aspect is, is counterexample directed because we're asking, are, did we hit the maximal? And then we get a right. new counterexample and we throw it in, right? And we right. grow. So I, I think I'm asking why the maximality cannot be stated as part of the specification. I, I still don't get the question. I mean, maximality okay. is part of the, the problem statement. Okay. But we can take it offline now. Okay. Oh, I see. So you're saying an, uh, an optimality condition on the models that we get. Yes. I see. I see. So that, that very much depends on, I guess, the logic that you use. And, and it's, it's, it's unclear how to actually state that. Um, but we can talk more in detail. I mean, if it was, if I'm just optimizing over a single dimension. In Cygus, you can state it in Cygus usually. You can, you What's can, that? In Cygus, you can state it. In, 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 in Cygus, you have a fixed set of operators. Yeah. And, and okay. This is different. Can you comment somehow your work with respect to existing literature? In 1992, I introduced I was abductive analysis <laughs> of modular logic <laughs> programs. <laughs> I was like, but, oh man, but in that, the term, the but, in that case, uh, <laughs> but in that case, synthesis was for free because the abstract domain was itself a logic program. Uh -huh. So by abduction, I get back immediately the code that was missing I see. So from so the abstract domain. In your case, this is not the case. I see. So. I see. So, so in that case, you weren't looking for a maximal possible solution. Is that, is that right? Okay, so I, perhaps this is, this is the difference. The other difference is we're dealing with you know, arbitrary SMT theories and we're trying to cast it in that, in that light. <laughs> 